Gerard, congratulations. Uh, how would you describe what your vision is of what the Patriots will look like under your leadership? Yeah, you know, the vision, um, I believe in shared vision, a shared vision between the players and the coaches and really all the stakeholders. So I know what my vision looks like, but until you can get the guys to buy into that vision or feel some type of accountability of what we want next year's team to look like, uh, it's kind of hard to really get to it today. But we will put out a smart, tough, and dependable football team that really enjoys playing football and playing for one another. Now, some might say it would be easier to follow the coach who <laughs> follows Bill Belichick. <laughs> You're going to follow him right after. Yeah. What would you say to that? You know, just be yourself. i am just say just be yourself. And look, there, there are some good things here, and there are some things that I would change. But being myself has gotten me to this point. You mentioned today you want to rebuild some relationships and knock down some silos. Yeah. What did you mean by that? You know, I just think, you know, over the years uh, throughout the organization, and I'm not talking about a, a particular department, but I think the information flow has kind of been like put on one person and that's coach and look he's able to handle that me as a first year head coach i don't want to i don't want to act like i have all the answers i'm in the learning phase whether learning from the uh, scouts or learning from coaches learning from the craft family, even learning from you right in the media i work in the media but at the same time even that relationship between coaches and players in the media i, I see it differently and i want to improve that relationship and and hopefully just improve the overall vibe here. You are the, the first black head coach in the history of the Patriots. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot. And, you know, my grandfather, you know, growing up, he would always tell me stories about, you know, how sometimes the best person doesn't get the job. And I'm very grateful uh, to be here. I'm very grateful to be a good coach. And I just happen to be black. And I think that's how it should, that's how it should operate. We want to get the best people here, equal opportunity, and, uh, and really, at the end of the day, we get judged on wins and losses. As the linebackers coach, you were on the practice field leading your defense um, against the Patriots offense and the quarterbacks. Yep. What is your view of what the Patriots currently have at quarterback? I would say that we have hard workers in here. Um, I said earlier we want to continue to evaluate uh, every position, coaches included. But what I will say is, you know, I walked in today, you know, Mac Jones was in there working out. You know, we can say whatever we want, but just that attitude, that mentality of changing the page is something that I hold high. Um, and Zappy, look, all those guys can, they have things that they can do, and really it's about improving and developing. So. Let's see if I got this right. We got Shia, Cheyenne, Cheyenne. Shiloh, yep. and Gerard Jr. Absolutely. Are we running quarters coverage? Is that, what, what do we say? I mean, no, those are the, the four kids. Yeah, and, and I know that means a lot to you. You're a head coach, but a dad. Uh, absolutely. You know, I talked about my stepdad a little bit earlier. I talked about my grandfather earlier. I've been blessed to have men step into my life and really you know, teach me what it, what it means to be a man. And, you know, one thing I think, and this is why I keep going back to developing, you have to develop the person before they'll go out there and run through a brick wall for you. When I'm talking about the players, like, this player has to know that I care about you as a man, first and foremost. We check in all the time. Mental health is a real thing. We check in all the time. If a guy comes in and obviously had something off the field, we try to lay off a little bit. And I think having that flexibility of knowing what your group, you know, what they're going through, you know, how they feel that day, and really adjusting your coaching style based off that, I want coaches who kind of subscribe to that uh, philosophy. Young Thundercat. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was probably 10 years ago. I just always thought that uh, Mr. Kraft had a way of connecting with people. And it doesn't matter what color you are, age, but when he started wearing sneakers with his suit, he wasn't wearing sneakers with the suit just as a fashion statement. That's just one more thing for a young kid, 12, 15 year old kid, to come up to Mr. Kraft and talk about. And I think those type of small gestures really bring uh, us closer as a community. Anything I missed that's important for you to mention? Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. You know, I thank God for, for everything he's done and the people that he has put in my life. Uh, and I appreciate you as well. Look, this will be a, a long-term relationship here already, and we'll continue to work together going forward.